it's time to get serious. I don't really like being negative on this channel or even just in life in general, but I feel like I have to be because I have something very negative that I need to say in order to make sure that other people don't fall into this trap. Today, I'm going to be talking about 10 reasons why you should not read Discworld. Ignore, ignore these. This is serious. And I need you to take it seriously. There are no jokes here today. Do I look like I'm joking? Number one. First of all, there's like a lot of them. There's a lot of Discworld novels. Do you, do you see all of, all of these? And human lives are short. We don't have a lot of time. We're not elves. We don't live forever. And because of that, why would you waste your time trying to read every Discworld novel? You'll probably die before it happens. You could get hit by a bus tomorrow. <laughs> You want to die having only read a couple of novels in a series? No. You want to die having finished reading that series. There's not much time left. You could die any day now, so why would you start reading Discworld now? There's so many of them. It's not feasible, so you might as well just not even start. Number two, and this one is just sick. Death is personified in Discworld. Death is given a whole personality. Yeah, the concept of death, of people dying, the thing I just mentioned that is going to keep you, hopefully, from reading any Discworld novel ever. Death is just given a whole personality. He's a whole person. And he talks in all caps, which honestly is really rude. You're not supposed to talk in all caps. Turn caps lock off. In addition, death just really forces you, the reader, not just the characters in the book, but you, the reader, to think about your own mortality and on the very nature of life and death and reproduction and humanity and all of this. And that's not really something that you want to think about, is it? The personification of death really just ends up being this horrible and existential thing that I don't think anybody should experience. Now, this is going to blow some mind but some of the books were actually written for young adults. That's right. Terry Pratchett wrote some books for people who are not adults. He wrote books at a reading level below what most people who are watching this probably are. Yeah, like the whole Tiffany Aching series, young adults. It's intended for young adults. If you Google it, it tells you that it's for ages like 14 and up or so, which is just ridiculous. And the fact that he is capable of writing YA novels, that should prevent you from reading his adult books because anybody who can write YA novels probably can't write a good adult novel. He's written some young adult books and also you never know if you're picking up a book that is young adult or adult when you pick up a Terry Pratchett book. You have to actually look it up and determine what the age group is. Also, all young adult books are terrible. All of them. None of them are good. In the books, there are footnotes. That's disgusting! Yeah, like he wrote a research paper or something. You have to stop reading what you're reading as soon as you see a footnote and then move your eyes from wherever you were on the page down to the bottom and then associate the number with the number in the sentence and then read that, which has now completely interrupted your reading flow and it's probably going to take you days to get back to where you were. It's ridiculous. I mean, we have to read footnotes in the middle of a fictional novel? This isn't a research paper. Why is he bothering putting footnotes in there and does he really expect me to read every single one of those things and then go back and try to find my place? It's so distracting and ridiculous. And don't get me started on how audiobooks could possibly handle footnotes. It's impossible. Footnotes, seriously, if I wanted to read a research paper, I would look one up. I don't. I want to read a fantasy novel, not a bunch of footnotes and a whole bibliography or whatever nonsense it is that he's putting down there. I don't read the footnotes. I'm not crazy. Another reason not to read Terry Pratchett is that it might prevent you from liking, commenting, and subscribing because you'd be busy reading Discworld novels. So if you are able to like, comment, and subscribe, or any one of those things, or hopefully a combination of them because you're not bothering to read some footnotes right now, I would greatly appreciate it. Just, you know, show your support for me not reading Discworld novels or even liking them. Okay, now this next one is not only bizarre, but really just showcases how entirely discombobulated the Discworld series is. And that is that no one can tell you the correct order to read the books in. People will tell you to start with entirely different books. You go on a forum and you ask, hey, what Discworld novel should I start with? And you'll get multiple different answers. Obviously, you should be able to just start with the first book. If you can't start with the first book in a series, then how in the world are you supposed to know that you're reading the books in the correct order? Seriously, if you tell people you're going to start with Color of Magic, half of them will tell you that you're insane and you shouldn't. You should start with guards, guards, or small gods, or something like that. And they're, they're not consistent in what they tell you to begin with. And then, to make matters even more confusing, within the Discworld series, there are several other mini-series, and each of them have their own book one. But to make that even more confusing, people will tell you to not even start with book one in a mini-series. Some of them will tell you to start with books two or five or something insane like that. How in the world are you supposed to get started in Discworld? 
world. And if you can't get started, you'll never finish. And as we talked about earlier, the whole point of reading a series is to finish it. So even if you wanted to begin reading Discworld, you can't because you don't know where to start. Okay, this next one, you need to brace yourselves because I was really disappointed when I learned this. Another reason not to read Discworld is that his books are popular. That's over. Yeah, lots of people read them apparently. Like a ton of them will read Dis- I why? Why do have they not watched? I guess they haven't watched this video because it hasn't been released yet. But seriously, why are his books popular? You don't how how are they popular? You don't even know where to start with them. But yeah, they're really popular, and you don't want to be somebody who's trying to ride the popularity train or be yet another person who is reading Terry Pratchett novels. You want to be somebody who is reading something more niche, something that not very many people have read. My thing is to go on Amazon and I find books that have between zero and one ratings, and then I read all of those because that's where you find the really good stuff, where the not popular stuff is. All of these Discworld novels that have tens of thousands of ratings on Goodreads, that's how you know that it's trash, because everyone is reading it. But why is everyone reading it? Well, let me tell you one simple reason why everyone is reading it, and it's another reason why you shouldn't. His books are easy to read. Yeah, they're really approachable and extremely consumable. I have no problem, I mean, People have no problem at all reading his books. You pick one up, you are immediately just hooked and you can't put it down. You should have to struggle through every single sentence of a book. If you're not, then you're not even really reading. Every single 80 word sentence of an actual book should take you roughly 30 minutes to process. No less, but more if possible. If I am finished with a page of a book within a single day, then it's not really a book. Books are supposed to be hard to read. Otherwise, you're not really getting anything out of the experience. Now, this next reason is really more of an attack on the author and how pretentious he is. Terry Pratchett is a knight and he forged his own sword. I'm not kidding. He got knighted for his contributions to literature, whatever that's supposed to mean. Really, did he contribute all that much? Let's be honest here. But then not only did he get knighted, he went and very pretentiously forged his own star steel sword, which is just nuts. He's barely a writer and now he thinks he's a blacksmith? Did he ever kill anybody with that sword? I sincerely doubt that he was able to. So why even have a sword, honestly, if you're just going to display it. Some people think that's really cool. I don't think that it is. I think that it is a waste of metal and just really pretentious. I'm really not a fan of people who go around calling themselves sir and even accept being knighted, particularly knighted for something that they didn't even really do. I mean, knighted for his works of literature. I mean... All right, get ready to have your mind blown by this next reason, which is that he is not Jane Austen. I beg your unbelievable pardon? Yeah, I was surprised when I heard it too. Terry Pratchett is not Jane Austen. He's actually Terry Pratchett. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? But one day when I picked up a Terry Pratchett book, expecting it to be Mansfield Park on the inside and discovered that it was instead Reaper Man, I was incredibly disappointed and angry. I continued to read all through Reaper Man, laughing on occasion, but not allowing myself to laugh too often. And it never turned into Mansfield Park. Terry Pratchett never became Jane Austen. I was very disappointed by this. I came into this book expecting it to be a Jane Austen novel. And when it wasn't, I was very angry. So Terry Pratchett, not Jane Austen. They're two completely different people. In fact, I have it on good authority that they were alive and writing in completely different time periods. That's impossible! I am as stunned as you are. Now this last point is really just a show of his own ideologies, and that is that he makes philosophy accessible. He kind of dumbs down some philosophical ideas and proposes them to readers. Readers who may even be as young as 14 in some cases. People in general shouldn't be thinking at all. They should not be pondering some of these matters that Terry Pratchett brings to our attention. And these matters also shouldn't be dumbed down to a level at which I or other people are able to understand. It's meant to be complicated. Philosophy is meant to be an incredibly complex and inaccessible sort of topic that can really only be discussed by people who have very long beards, smoke pipes, and are alive in the 1600s. This is absurd. And the fact that so many of his books in the obnoxiously robust Discworld series tackle philosophy and philosophical ideas is completely insane. I can forgive one mention of philosophical ideas over the course of roughly 3,600,000 words, but to have so many of them packed into these and probably explored once in each of them, that's insane. I, I read every Discworld novel so that I could find all of the mentions of philosophies and friends. There are a lot of them. You should stay away. Don't fill your head with ideas. Fill your head with... Uh... 
just to make sure that I'm entirely clear. Obviously, I like Terry Pratchett. This is an April Fool's joke. If I see a dislike on this video from a Terry Pratchett fan, I'm going to have an aneurysm. Despite not being Jane Austen, Terry Pratchett is my favorite author, and I really can't drive this point home enough. Terry Pratchett is not the same as Jane Austen. Still, that shakes me to my core. I, I really thought they were the same person. All right, well, thank you for taking the time to check out this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you would like to see another video from me, you can do so by clicking up here. And until next time, bye. Thank you.